Okay guys, so today we're going to be going through collecting like terms to simplify an algebraic expression. Um, it's important to understand how to collect like terms as part of bigger problems later on with algebra. This is an introductory video uh, of the basic concept of collecting like terms. So let's go straight into it and discuss what are like terms. Now like terms are terms that have the same pronumeral. For example, here, I have a number of different terms. I have 2x, 3x, 5z, x, 6y, y, z, 2y, and x squared. Now, let's look at the first term, which is 2x. Now, 2x has a pronumeral x. So, all of the like terms of 2x are all of the terms that just have an x as a base value. So, I have 2x, I have 3x. I have x, and that's it. Now, some of you may ask why x squared is not part of that. x and x squared are different terms. They're not like terms. Let's choose another color and go on to the next term, which is 5z. Now, 5z has like terms of only z there. So, you can see 5z and z are like terms. Now, 6y... It's like terms is y and 2y. So all the green are like terms. And finally, x squared is its own term there. So now you understand what like terms are. Let's go through and uh, do an example of simplifying like terms by using addition and subtraction. Now, the first one says x plus 2x. Now, if you don't understand what x is, that means 1x. And if it makes it easier for you, you can write the 1 in front of the x to explain that. So, 1x plus 2x. This is the same as me saying I have 1x, and then I add two more x's to it. So, now I have 3x's. The next one, 3y plus 2y. This is like me saying I have 3y's, 1, 2, 3, and then I add another 2y's. And in total, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 y's. Next one, 6a minus 2a, 6 minus 2 is 4. So this equals 4a. And lastly, 2x squared plus x squared. Remember I said if there's no, no number value in front of the pronumeral, it is always a 1. So 2x plus 1x squared equals 3x squared. So now that we've uh, mastered the simple addition and subtraction of simple like terms, let's go on to example 2, where we simplify using different like terms. Now here, I like to use different symbols to differentiate. But it's very important to understand that the plus or minus stays with whatever is after it. Again, the plus or minus stays with whatever is after it to indicate whether it is a positive or negative value. So here, I have my 7a as my first value. Now, it's like term, I'm going to put in a blue box. But remember, that positive stays with that 2a there. Now, the next term I have is the b, and I'm going to do that in another color. The plus 3b is its own term. So simplifying this, I have 7a plus 2a. 7 plus 2 is 9a, and then the plus 3b is left there. And that is as simple as that can go. Now let's do the next one. Here, I have a seven, just a number. Are there any single numbers there? No, so that's its own term. And then I have the plus two a and the minus a. You notice how the positive and the negative stays with whatever is after it. Here, the seven is by itself, so there's nothing I can add or subtract with that. Two a minus one a. 2 minus 1 is 1, so then that is plus a. Now remember, 
using algebra. If it's just a 1a or 1x, we only write the pronumeral value there. Now the last one is 9xy plus 4yx. Now, why are they like terms? Let's go through this. This is the same as 9 times x times y, and this is the same as 4 times x times y. Now, with multiplication, it doesn't matter which order you multiply the numbers, you'll get the same answer. For example, 2 times 4 is 8, and 4 times 2 is 8 as well. So here, they are the same values. So this in order means 9 plus 4, which is 13. So this is 13xy, or you can write this as 13yx. They're both the same thing. It doesn't matter. Let's go on to example three. We are now simplifying more like terms, but there's just more terms. It doesn't make it any more difficult. I'm going to put my a's in boxes, blue boxes. Remember the positive and negative stays with it. And I'm going to put my b's in circles. And remember the positive and negative stays with it. So here I have 15 plus 3 which equals 18, plus another 2, which equals 20. So this is 20a. You can cross them off as well to indicate that you've already done them. And then I'm left with plus 6b as its own term there. Now let's go through with here. I have p's and I have x's. So the first one is 10p, and then plus 3p. And then I have my x's. And my x's can go in circles, plus 7x, minus 2x, and minus x, or minus 1x. So let's do the first one. 10p plus 3p is 13p. 7 minus 2 is 5, minus another one is 4. So this is 4x. Now let's do the last one. The last one here is x squared. Remember, x and x squared are two different terms. So I have x squared and I have my plus 5x. So 4 plus 3 is 7. 7x seven squared and plus 5x as my final. So there we have simplified that. Now let's go on to understanding what have we done here. Remember, just a quick summary, you can only collect terms that are the same or alike. For example, x's with x's and y's with y's. And the symbol, the positive or the negative, stays with whatever is after it to indicate whether that, that value is a positive or a negative. Hopefully you understood collecting like terms. Thank you very much.